everyone. Uh, so we're going to be going over run in order. Uh, as with any problem, we should always start by reading the prompt. So let's go ahead and do that. Write a function called run in order that accepts as arguments in this order an array of functions and an array of numbers representing times in milliseconds. Run in order should execute the functions in order with the corresponding numbers in milliseconds being the time to wait from the previous invocation. Uh, and then we've got an example um, here at the bottom, so let's take a look at that. Uh, right off the bat, I've got uh, three function definitions here. Uh, say hi, say bye, and say howdy. And uh, they're each logging um, something different to the, to the console here. Uh, and then immediately after, uh, we've got this invocation to run in order, which is the function that we're building. Uh, and of course, per the prompt, it takes its two arguments, uh, the first being an array of functions. Um, and notice that these are not calls to those functions, right? We, we don't have parens anywhere in here. Um, so these are just the function definitions that are being passed as elements to this array. Uh, and then the second uh, argument that this uh, that uh, run in order is being passed is an array of numbers. And these are just numbers, right? 300, 600, and 200. Uh, but we know from the prompt that these numbers uh, represent time in milliseconds. Uh, so that's going to be key. Now, uh, immediately below that, we've got this comment that kind of lets us know what should actually be logged to the console. So uh, we should be logging high 300 milliseconds after the initial invocation to run in order. Um, by should be logged 600 milliseconds after high has been logged. So, so note that's, that's not 600 milliseconds after the call to run in order, but rather 600 milliseconds after, say, high has been called. Um, so only after 600 milliseconds, um, say, by should be invoked. Uh, and then it's the same deal uh, after, say, by has been invoked, we want to wait 200 milliseconds before invoking, say, howdy. Um, so that's, that's kind of the goal. That's what we're going to be working towards. Uh, in terms of strategy, there's a couple of techniques that I'm thinking about. Um, the first is uh, because we're, we're being given arrays um, and specifically we're being asked to run things in order, uh, I'm going to use some sort of loop. It's most likely going to be a for loop. Um, the logic makes sense here because arrays are zero index, so they start at zero, and we can have a for loops counter start at zero as well um, to reference the indices in the array. Um, so that's, uh, that, that's, well, that's what we're going to be using to traverse through these arrays. Um, another uh, thing we're going to be dealing with is these, these delays, right? We've, um, we've got to wait these times before actually being able to invoke these function definitions that were being passed. So to do that, I'm going to use the browser's set timeout function. Um, and then the last thing I'm thinking about is how to handle these, these wait times. Um, I'm thinking instead of trying to figure out exactly when say by was invoked and then you know waiting 200 milliseconds from that time, I'm going to be using totals instead. So um, you'll see what that looks like when we get to the code, uh, but basically I'm thinking uh, when this function run in order is initially called, um, I'm just going to throw everything to a set timeout function and instead of specifically saying I want to wait 600 milliseconds after say hi has been invoked before um, I invoke say bye, um, I'm just going to pass it to the set timeout function as 900 milliseconds, the total uh, time of, of, of what we've uh, looped through so far. Um, and this is, this is going to be 900 milliseconds, so still 600 milliseconds after 300 milliseconds. It still satisfies our criteria, and that's the strategy we're going to go with. So let's move on to pseudocoding this strategy out. Um, and just real quick, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uncomment the example code there just to give us that syntax highlighting. Um, I like pretty colors. I hope you guys do too. 
Um, and just worth noting, it looks like um, we have been given some different wait times um, than that was in the example over here. That's totally okay. Our function should be able to handle it uh, regardless. So let's go ahead and uh, pseudocode out our strategy for this. Um, I always like to start with the basics, um, pretty much just what's been given to us. So my first line is going to be that we need to declare this function. Um, so let's do that. And we know that it's going to be called run in order. That's what the prompt is asking us to name it. Um, and we also know from the prompt that this function takes in two arguments. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in the pseudocode as well. And I'm also going to go ahead and name them, um, just so I don't have to think, you know, think about that later. All right. So this pretty much outlines the skeleton of our function with just these two lines of pseudocode. Um, let's move into what we're going to be doing inside the body of the function. Um, so we we mentioned earlier that my strategy around handling the wait times is to have a running total of them um, as opposed to you know trying to figure out exactly when say by was invoked or say hi was invoked. I'm just going to use a total time and pass that to to uh, eventually pass that to a set timeout function. Um, so I'm going to declare uh, a variable to keep track of that. All right, and then now we can actually start looping through one of the input arrays. Now, because we're getting two input arrays, we can actually loop through either one of them. Um, it doesn't really matter for this example. We're assuming that we're getting two arrays of equal length. Uh, but it doesn't, you know, it, it's not always going to be the case. Uh, in this example, that's true, but we can easily add some uh, some error handling logic to deal with uh, arrays of differing lengths. Now that we've got the skeleton of our for loop set up, we can start focusing on the logic that we're going to be performing inside. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to update our time variable just to make sure that we have uh, the most up-to-date value uh, before we start doing anything with our set timeout function. Uh, and then the last line uh, is, of course, going to be actually invoking our set timeout function. So let's do that. All right, and that pretty much does it for pseudocode. Um, we should have our pseudocode uh, to the point where it's actionable. Actionable meaning I can take this pseudocode and directly translate it into real code. So let's attempt to do that. So our first two lines of code declare a function called run in order and it takes two arguments, uh, our functions array and our wait times array. I'm going to use the function keyword to, to declare this. Um, of course, it's named run in order and it takes our uh, functions array and our wait times array. All right, um, and that, that pretty much covers it for the skeleton of this function. Let's start, uh, let's move on to the body of this function. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, declare that variable to keep track of the wait times as we loop. I'm going to use the let keyword to declare this variable and I'm just going to go ahead and call it time and I'm also going to initialize it to zero. Um, I could easily leave this undefined and figure out a way to deal with it later but because I know I'm going to be performing some mathematical operations on this variable I want to make sure that the data type is a number that way I don't get any funky type coercion stuff going on. And I'm also going to make sure to use the let keyword because I know that I'm going to be updating this variable uh, for every iteration of our for loop and I want it to be mutable. Um, by contrast, if I use the const keyword, I wouldn't be able to reassign this so that would be a no-go. So let's change that back to let and then now we can move on to uh, declaring our for loop. 
So uh, again, this is just going to be a regular for loop. Um, you've probably seen the syntax many times over, but uh, I'm just going to use the classic i as our uh, loop counter. Um, of course, using the let word because this is going to be updated every time. Um, we want this loop to run for uh, as long as i is less than the length of one of these input arrays. Um, and again, it doesn't matter which one, uh, they're both going to be the same length. Um, so I'm just going to choose the functions array and uh, we'll use the length property on that uh, to, grab it, uh, to grab its length. And um, every time this loop runs, we want to increment i by 1. So I'm just going to use i++ plus uh, plus for that. And, uh, and now we've got the skeleton of our, of our for loop set up. Um, and we can focus on the logic inside. So again, the first thing we're going to do is update our time variable and we're just going to reassign it to whatever time currently is plus the corresponding time that were passed in our wait times array. So um, if we're looking at the actual coding example, this is going to be either 200, 100 or, or 300. Um, so to grab the current element in that array, uh, we can reference the actual uh, array, so wait times array, and we want the ith element from that array. And what this is going to do is it's, it's just going to make sure that we have uh, the accurate uh, time value that we're going to be passing into our set timeout function. Uh, and speaking of the set timeout function, uh, of course now is the, uh, is the appropriate time to write that out. Uh, set timeout itself takes two arguments. Uh, it's going to take a function definition as its first argument and of course we want to grab that from our functions array um, and we only want to do it one at a time, right? So we want to reference the current element in that functions array. So uh, that's going to be uh, just the functions array at the ith element um, or current index. And then the second argument that set timeout takes is going to be the wait time. And if you look at the documentation for set timeout, it actually does want that time in milliseconds. So uh, we're lucky here in that we don't have to do any sort of uh, any sort of conversions or additional operations to get this time in milliseconds. We already have it, uh, and that's going to be whatever our current time value is uh, as declared on line nine. Now it's worth noting that set timeout also does take a couple of other arguments. Um, those arguments will be passed into the function definition at the time of invocation. Um, but in looking at our, our array of functions here, none of these functions actually make use of parameters. So we don't really need them here, um, which means that we're actually done since we've run out of pseudocode to uh, produce uh, actual JavaScript code from. So let's run this code and make sure that it works. And yep, we've got the test passing. So we've done it correctly. Um, and just for, um, you know, just for clarity, let's run through this one more time uh, now that it's written out. First, we have declared a function here called run in order, and it takes uh, two input arrays, uh, one being an array of function definitions, the other being an array of wait times. Uh, these are going to be the milliseconds that we want to wait. Um, then we're declaring a time variable to keep track of the total time um, as we loop through, the, uh, through one of these arrays. And then we're actually, um, we're actually looping through the functions array. Um, using just a basic for loop where i starts at 0, we're looping to the uh, end of the array and we're incrementing i by 1 uh, on every iteration of this loop. Now inside of the loop, we're updating our time variable immediately to make sure that we have the, the uh, correct time to work with. And then we're firing our set timeout function, passing in the current function definition and its corresponding wait time. Um, so what this is going to do is this, this set timeout function, this is actually not a JavaScript method. Um, this is part of the web API. So this is something that the browser makes available to you. What it's going to do is it's, it's going to make use of that event loop that you learned about earlier on in this unit. And it's going to send this, this function definition off to the web API and, and kind of hold it there for for time milliseconds 
And then once that time expires, this function definition will be pushed into the event loops task queue and ultimately pushed onto the, to the actual JavaScript call stack once uh, the call stack is empty and it's ready to receive this function uh, to be invoked. Um, and thus we get um, hi, bye, and howdy uh, all invoked in the, same, in the uh, correct order um, utilizing the correct wait times to kind of space those logs apart. Um, so that's, that's all for run in order. Thanks for watching.